Endomorphs are an amazing tool when it comes to animation, but they can also be useful in the modeling process. Let's take a look at a few examples of using endomorphs to help us model. I'm going to go ahead and start by creating a flat plane, and while I'm, uh, while I'm making it, I'm going to go ahead and add some segments. So I'm going to use the up arrow key to add some segments in the z-axis, and I'm going to use the right arrow key to add some segments in the x-axis. So we'll use that right there. I'm going to go ahead and commit to that using the space bar. Then I'm going to move the, the plane up a little bit and hit tab to turn on sub patches. So if I hit tab, I'm back to polygonal mode and tab again, uh, sub patch mode. So what I'm going to do is use, I'm going to go ahead and set up an endomorph. Uh, to do that, I'm going to come down here to M for morph and choose new. And let's create a morph called up. Hit create. It adds it down here to our list. So I can go ahead and close this window. And I'm going to go ahead and move the plane up. That's all I'm going to do. Okay, so if I switch back to our base, we can see this is where the base mesh is. And these are where the points have been moved in this endomorph. I'm going to put it back on base. And I'm going to take advantage of that morph so that we can do some sculpting to our flat plane. Go to full screen with one viewport. And I'm going to head over to the map tab and choose airbrush. Hit N for numeric. And for the vertex map, I'm going to choose the up morph. Now it lets me know that altering the shape of this base object will affect all relative morphs. So we're going to kind of be trashing the morph we just made by using it. But that's OK, because we kind of built it as a trash morph just for modeling. So I'm going to hit OK. Now I can right click and size up the radius of my brush, or I can use the mini slider here. I can change the strength of my uh, brush right here, but I'm going to go ahead and leave it at 10%. Size my brush, say something like this, and I'm just going to left click and drag. And I can start creating kind of like a little mountain range here. Size it down a little bit. Little, little peaks there. So what's going on? What's going on here? Well, basically what's happening is it's using the position of the points in the up morph and I'm airbrushing on 10% at a time as I'm, as I'm brushing over this. The longer I stay on a certain area, the more, uh, more time there, the more the points are going to be raised up based on where the, the morph is. Now, because the morph is still there and I keep driving it and whatever I do to the base is going to affect all of the endomorphs, I can keep going. There is no, there is no limit. I can even go beyond the point at which we originally started. So again, this is just a quick way of using a morph target to create a terrain from a, fr from a flat plane. Let's take a look at another example. I'm going to go ahead and choose uh, this head model here. And let's create a morph target for that. So M new and I'm going to call this bloat. We're going to we're going to puff out his face. So I'm going to hit create. It adds it to my list. Uh, I'm going to go I'm going to go ahead and close the airbrush tool for right now. I'm going to go over to modify, translate, more and choose point normal move. And whenever I click left click and drag on this, it's going to allow me to move all the points out in the surface in the normal of the point. So basically I'm just kind of puffing his whole face up. It's kind of bloating it. Okay, that's just going to be for that morph. I'm going to take it back to the base and I'm going to head over to map, airbrush, in for numeric, and for the vertex map, let's choose that morph target that we just made. And it gives me the same information about that if when I change the base, it is going to affect all the morph targets, including the one that I'm going to be painting with. So I'm going to hit OK. And we can size the brush. Uh, to whatever we want. Now we could turn symmetry on and that would work, but I just want to work on one side. So let's just kind of, this guy's uh, been in a fight, I think. Okay. And let's kind of bump up his nose. We can kind of crease the side. I think uh, 
he got hit pretty hard on this side, but we're not going to affect this side. So all I'm doing is using the information from that morph target, and I'm airbrushing it on, painting it on little at a time, so that I can sculpt based off of that morph. Okay. Now, another handy use for this would be to create endomorphs for our animation. So I'm going to pop over to a character that already has some morph targets set up, and I want to build some new morph targets. So I'm going to head over to M. Let's make a new one. And I'm just going to call this mixed, for lack of a better name right now, create. And for this mixed morph, instead of affecting the base, I'm just going to build a new morph based off of other morphs that I have. So let's take a look in our list. I'm going to pick, um, let's pick the ooh. Okay, and I'm just going to do one side. And then I want to affect his eyes. So I'm going to go find uh, eyes blink. Okay, size this down. And I'm just going to kind of close up this eye a little bit. Okay. And then I'm going to go find the brows. Let's do uh, brows surprised. Okay. Kind of size that up a little bit. Okay. And I'm going to find uh, Browse uh, Angry. And I'll do it to this one right here. So I'll bring that down. Okay. So what I've done is created a custom morph. This He looks like he's been beat up as well. I guess that's kind of the day, uh, day we're having here. So I, I created a custom morph based off of several other morphs just by airbrushing it on. So using endomorphs for sculpting, uh, is a is a great way of of speeding up the modeling process, and it's as simple as you're not limited to using the airbrush, but the airbrush seems like a, a pretty handy tool for this type of of sculpting. So you just simply uh, select the vertex map. In this case, um, we are using morphs, and morphs are vertex maps. It's just information saved to the point. It's just a different X Y Z location for the point, and we're airbrushing on that new X Y Z coordinate for for the point that we're airbrushing over and of course we have the strength and the radius on the brush so hopefully this will give you some ideas on how you can go about and use morph targets use endomorphs uh, for the modeling process and uh, and I hope you've enjoyed it